In this video, we're going to do a graphical analysis of the results of our numerical calculation. So here we have the three plots. We have a plot of position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. What we're going to do is simply, given one of these plots, work out how you would estimate what the other plots look like. Now, this is a really useful skill. You can use it to get a rough idea of what's going on without doing any calculation. You can use it to double check the results of a more complicated calculation. And you can use it to interpret data someone else gave you. So the ability to do this just with the visual part of your brain by just looking at the plots is a really important one. So first of all, let's imagine how we'd go from one of these plots at the top going downwards. Now what's happening here is that each plot is the rate of change of the thing above. So velocity is the rate of change of position, and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Okay, so let's say we just had this plot up here at the top, and we wanted to know what the velocities look like. What we need to do is tell off this plot, you see the person stands at the top, and then they fall down, not too fast to begin with, getting faster and faster as they plummet. We need to work out the rate of change of this. Now, the rate of change on a graph is the slope of the graph, which is the gradient of the graph, how much down it goes per unit time. So, for example, if we wanted to measure the slope at time 6, we can say how far down does it go over the next second. So that's how far down it goes over time. So it's distance down over time. So the way you really work out the slope is you take your point and you draw a tangent line at that point. And the gradient of that tangent line, how far down it goes per unit half sideways, tells you the slope. So let's imagine doing three tangent lines here. Let's do one near the beginning. At the beginning, a tangent line is going to look something like that. At the end, the tangent line, which pretty much is a straight line, is going to look something like this. So what we can see is here, the slope goes down but not by very much unit time. Here it goes down by more, and here it goes down slightly more still. So what we're seeing is the gradient is negative here, and more negative and more negative. But the difference between here and here isn't very much. So we're looking for a plot that starts off right at here, the slope's almost zero. So we're looking at something that starts off close to zero, and then gets more and more negative as you go along. So we've got something that goes starts off near zero, gets more and more negative, but then doesn't change very much, so it sort of plateaus out. That makes sense? So what you do is you take this plot, draw a tangent line at each point, and the slope tells you what the value is here. So the slope here is small and negative, so you do a small and negative value here. Here it's large and negative, so you need a large and negative value. And here it's also large and negative, and only slightly more than that, so it's flattening out. Let's try that again, going from velocity to acceleration. Once again, you take a point here, and you draw a tangent line, and look at what the slope is. So what I'd say is that here, it's quite a big downward slope, so we need a large negative value. Here it's also negative, but less slopey, and here it's negative, but almost flat. So what we're looking at is a large negative value over here, which we get, minus g. Here we're getting a somewhat smaller negative value, and here quite a small negative value. So that's how you go from something to its derivative. You take tangent points, look at the slope, which is how far down it goes at that tangent point divided by the change in time, and that tells you the value here. So slope here goes to value here. Can you do it the other way around? Well, you certainly can. So in this case, let's say we knew only the acceleration versus time. So what we know is that here the acceleration is large and negative. So that means wherever we're starting here, the slope has to be large and negative. In the middle, it's small and negative, so we need something with a small and negative slope. And over here, it's nearly flat, so we need something with almost no slope. So what we want is a curve that's dropping fast there, dropping slowly here and not dropping at all there. And a curve like this does the trick. Likewise, going from here, velocity up to position, we can see that here the slope is close to zero. So we need something that's pretty flat there. 
and here it's large and negative, so you need something that's large and negative, and here it's even large and negative by a small amount. So you need a curve that goes from flat to large and negative to even large and negative, and something that goes like this meets the track. So that's how you go graphically from one of these curves to another.